Hello again everybody. Today we're going to talk about Windows Autopilot. We're going to look at how to deploy a Windows 11 machine into Windows Intune by using Windows Autopilot. We're going to start this off with a whiteboard demo uh, to describe how Windows Autopilot actually works and then we're going to get straight in and actually see uh, a demo that I've set up for this. So without further ado, let's go and talk about Windows Autopilot. So the whole point of Windows Autopilot is that in your environment, you're going to have things like Intune running, or at least hopefully you've got Intune running at this point. Now Intune's going to have a number of things inside it. Um, you're going to be injecting things into Windows Intune like applications that you want to actually push and you're going to be injecting things like configs that you actually want to push to your users and your user devices. Now the best idea with Windows Intune is to get this going automatically. So you could have a series of rule sets that say for example um, along the lines of if a user is in the marketing department they get the following applications and they get the following configs delivered to their computers. Now, this is great as long as that laptop itself is actually registered into Windows Intune uh, for deployment of these applications. So what we want to do is kind of get these laptops or get these devices automatically registering with Windows Intune so we can automatically start pushing down applications and configurations. Now this all relies upon the fact that Microsoft allow Windows 10 and Windows 11 to phone home. So when you've got a device, like for example, a Windows 10 or a Windows 11 device, this device has a very unique hardware ID. And this hardware ID is generated from a number of things. It's generating from things like the processor, the motherboard, uh, the serial codes that are inside that machine. Either way, this hardware ID is unique and it's unique out of all of the computers in the world. Now, because of that, these machines themselves are actually phoning home in the background to Microsoft. And because they're phoning home in the background to Microsoft, Microsoft can identify that computer out of every other machine on the planet. So with Windows Autopilot, by using this idea, what we can do is we can actually go and say, hey, look, I've got a bunch of users down here and these bunch of users need new laptops, they need new desktops. So I'm going to go to somebody like Dell, or I'm going to go to somebody like Lenovo, or I'm going to go to Microsoft themselves for their Surface product line, and I'm going to buy a whole bunch of devices from one of these manufacturers, okay? So I'm gonna buy a bunch of devices from Dell, for example. Now these devices, when Dell actually build them, say they build these three laptops, these are going to have this unique hardware ID um, for each individual laptop. What Dell are going to do is they're actually gonna feed that hardware ID into Windows Intune for you because Dell have a relationship with Microsoft, as you're aware. And what can happen at that point is that when they've been fed into Windows Intune, they're actually kind of fed into this Windows Autopilot system. And that means what Dell can do is they can take these devices and actually ship these laptops directly to individual users. Now these individual users might even be working from home and all they have to do is they actually have to log into their devices with their user accounts. So if they log into something like Bob, this will be a Microsoft 365 account. Since this is a Microsoft 365 account, if Bob logs directly into that laptop with it, that 365 account is in Azure AD up here and it authenticates over there. Azure Active Directory is talking to Windows Intune and Windows Intune can then take control of that device itself because Windows Intune knows that that device exists because Windows Autopilot and Dell have provided this unique hardware hash over to the Intune device. Then Windows Intune can come in and actually start delivering applications and configurations to that user. So even though that user might be working from home um, or working from anywhere in the world, it doesn't actually matter. That device that's delivered to them can actually be automatically hooked in into our Intune environments and we can dynamically deliver applications and configurations based on the user account and based on the device that that user has actually received. 
What we can also do is we can generate this manually as well. And this is where my demo will come in. So if we've got a laptop or a computer here that's sitting independently on its own, what we can actually do is we can jump into that device. We can run a little PowerShell script, a little PS1 script to generate this hardware ID. And once this hardware ID is generated, we can pass that out as a CSV file and we can actually upload it manually into Windows Intune. And at that point, Windows Intune knows that that device exists. It can identify that device uniquely out of every device in the world and can then actually start feeding that device applications and configurations that might be assigned to it. So let's get straight in and do a demo. So the first thing I'm going to do here in my demo is I'm going to create a group, a dynamic group, where all of the devices that will be joined by Windows Intune will actually be fed into. So I'm going to come in here into the Active Directory Admin Center. You could do this through Android if you wanted to. Uh, and I'm going to create a new group here. And I'm going to create this as a security type. And I'm going to just name this group IT Devices. We'll give it an IT Department Devices description down here and the membership type is going to actually be a dynamic device. Now within here, I'm going to add a dynamic query and we're actually going to add in an expression here. Uh, we're going to edit this rule syntax and we're going to drop in this specific expression, device.devicePhysicalIDs contains ZTDID. That way I will be able to identify any of these devices that are joining via Windows Autopilot. I'm going to save that for you right now and I'm just going to create that group. Okay, we can now see that our group is created here called IT Devices and there's nothing in it as of yet. So if we go into members, we'll see there's no members attached to this group. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move over to a blank machine. This is the machine we are going to use Windows Autopilot to join this to our environment automatically. You can see this machine is very basic. It doesn't even have any domain joins attached to it. Um, so if we go and run, not who am I, uh, if we go and run who am I on here, you'll be able to see that it's even got the basic Windows auto generated um, name. I do have access out to the internet. So if I ping 888, you'll be able to see I do have access out to the internet. What I need to do is I need to go and get the unique hardware ID for this machine. And I'm going to do that by running install script. What this is going to do is it's going to go out to a location on the internet called PS Gallery. And this location has a collection of modules and a collection of scripts from Microsoft and from others. Fuck. This location has a collection of scripts and modules from Microsoft and others. And this specific script here is going to generate a CSV file. This CSV file is actually going to contain our hardware ID, our unique hardware ID for this specific virtual machine. This is just a VM, but it would work with actually full physical computers as well. That CSV file is then going to contain that hardware IT that I will then upload into Windows Intune. So let's go and run that file now, or sorry, run that script now with an output file. So we'll just run get Windows Autopilot info.ps1, and that should have created that very, very quickly for us. If I just jump in and have a look at that specific file, so I jump into this PC, I jump into the root of C, you'll be able to see there should be a computer.csv file right here. If we look at the contents of this CSV file by using the type command here in our PowerShell prompt, you'll be able to see this is the unique hardware hash of this machine. This is the information that we need to upload into Windows Intune. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that CSV file, I'm going to move it over to a server computer where I had access to Windows Intune. I could move this out in any different way I actually want to, it's just text, but I'm going to pass this over directly into SEA SVR2. This is actually uh, the computer that's running this Hyper-V environment as well. So if I jump back over to this SEA SVR2 environment, I should find inside this eLab files that computer.csv file. So let's move that into Windows Intune. So if I drop over here into endpoint.microsoft.com into my Windows Intune environment, what I can do now is I can drop down into devices and within devices, I can drop into enroll devices. 
Now, when I drop into Enroll Devices, what I have the ability to do down here underneath Windows Autopilot Deployment Program is I can actually start to import that into here. So I can just drop in and I can go into Devices and I can go and add that specific file. Now, if I had uh, Dell or Lenovo or anybody else, um, I would actually already have this pre-populated because they would be providing me with that information. So I'm going to actually import the CSV file. I'm going to grab it from this computer directly. So here we go, E, lab files. Let's go grab that computer.csv file and upload it. Okay. Now this process, as it says here, can take up to 15 minutes for this enrollment process to actually complete. So we'll just wait for that uh, to appear before we carry on. So we can see now that my autopilot device has actually been added in. So we've got a serial number, we've got a manufacturer, Microsoft Corp, because it's a virtual machine that's running on um, Hyper-V. And we've got no real other details in here. There's no device names or group tags. It's not associated to anything. So we need to do another step down here. First of all, we need to go and create a Windows Autopilot deployment profile. So we basically can identify this machine. We can have control of this machine, but we need to know what to do with it. Now we can actually do that. So let's drop back into our Enroll Devices section down here, and we're going to select Deployment Profiles. So on this deployment profile, we're going to go and select a new profile for Windows PC because this isn't a HoloLens. If you don't know what a HoloLens is, you should really Google that thing. It's awesome. But let's go and create a profile. And within this profile, we're going to create a Contoso Profile 1. I could name this anything I want to. And we're going to convert all targeted devices to autopilot devices down here. Uh, in the out-of-box experience, we're going to change this out to a user-driven, or we could also do a new self-deploying, which is actually in preview at the moment. If something's in preview from Microsoft, it kind of means that it might have a couple of bugs inside there. Well, it's not in preview. It might have a couple of bugs inside there anyway. Either way, so we're going to join this to Azure Active Directory, and we're going to join this as Azure AD joint rather than hybrid joint down here. And we're going to add a couple of other things. So we're just going to hide this Microsoft software license terms. We're going to hide the privacy settings down here. We're going to hide these change account control devices and the user account type. We're just going to change that to administrator. So there's a local admin on this system. We're going to leave that language region all at default, uh, which at the moment is set to English US. And we're going to see, leave that automatic configure keyboard uh, on yes and the apply device template on no. So on here with the assignments, we're going to add this to specific groups. So we're going to add a specific group in here. And we're going to take our IT devices group, the one that we created earlier, and we're going to select that. We're going to click next on this one, and we're going to create this. Now, hopefully, what we should be able to do is go back here to IT devices, refresh this, and we should be able to see that our Windows Intune device was automatically added to this group. So when this Contoso profile is applying to that group, it's also applying to the device that we have actually joined in here via Windows Intune. Now all I need to do for that device is to actually go and reset it. So that should be taking control of that device and making it Azure AD joint. If I drop back into that SEAWS4 machine down here, if I just drop into it, I can choose reset and I can choose reset this PC. This is actually going to do a reinstallation of the operating system and allow Windows Autopilot to kind of take control of everything within that environment. So we could reset this PC now and we'll just remove everything and completely reinstall the whole thing. This is going to take a while to actually do this process, so we'll choose a local reinstall rather than a cloud reinstall, so we don't have to re-download all of Windows 11. But at this point, what I could do uh, while that's getting on is I could come back here into Intune, for example, and I can go into things like applications, and I could go and take any applications that I already have, and I could go and add these applications to my IT devices group. So when that Intune process completes with Windows Autopilot, it will automatically receive the applications that I've specified for it. So I could choose something like, for example, the 365 apps for Windows 10 or later, 
Let's go and select that and let's just make sure that Office 365 is being pushed across to this. Uh, I know it's called Microsoft 365 now, but it's kind of stuck in my head that it's Office 365. So we'll just go and select a couple of the basic Office apps down here. We don't need Access. Uh, we don't need Publisher. We don't need Team. Well, we do need Teams. Let's say we've got Excel, OneNote, Outlook, PowerPoint, Teams, and Word. That'll be fine. We'll leave everything else into defaults on here. Uh, and we'll just take a default file format of Open Office, and we'll leave this on the uh, monthly enterprise channel. So on that assignment, if I go and assign that to specific groups, I can assign that to the IT devices group down here, and I can review and create this. So what should actually happen is now that has been added to IT devices, and this is an IT devices group computer, once this reset procedure completes, and I can log into this with a normal user account that is already in Azure AD. Now, if we look in here, I do have a lot of users that are already in Azure Active Directory, um, a lot of default users within this tenant. So under all users, there we go. I've got a bunch that I can actually use. I can log into this machine once it's complete its reset with one of those with one of those accounts. So let's just leave that to reset for the moment uh, and then we'll try and log in and we'll see what we get. So I'm just going to use an account here called Alex W, which is an account that already exists here within my talent um, belonging to an Alex Wilbur to sign into this newly reset machine. I'm going to pop in his password here. And we're going to wait for that process to complete and set up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just set up Windows Hello for this account for Alex W. And we're just going to give them a very basic pin code here. So let's just go and pop in a pin code here for this account. Click OK. And we should be logged in. If we take a look here, we can see with dsreg command slash status that this is actually Azure AG joined at this point with this default device name connected to Azure AD. After a long time, well, I say a long time, after a certain amount of time, what's going to happen now is that our Office 365 will be streamed down to this computer and installed in the background, and Alex Wilbur will receive all of his additional settings. Over in our Windows Intune Admin Center, if we go and click into our Windows devices down here and refresh, we can see it's still not appeared actually in Windows Intune. It might take a while to actually pop up. If we drop back into Azure Active Directory and we drop into Devices down here, we should be able to see on all devices it's actually appearing here as Azure AD joined and owned by Alex Wilbur with this lovely little icon that shows that it's actually joined by um, Azure AD and has got Windows Autopilot enabled for it. So that kind of concludes a quick demonstration of how to actually take a standalone machine and use Windows Autopilot to actually connect that machine into Azure AD and to actually connect that machine into Windows Intune and therefore control it in the future. I hope you enjoyed this demo and you'll join me next time. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.